ब्लड इन्वेस्टिगेशन रिवील्ड एन इंक्रीज इन लेवल्स ऑफ एन एच थ्री एंड ग्लूटामीन दिस इज एंट हियर देर इज इंक्रीज इन द अमोनिया लेवल्स फाइव एंजाइम्स विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट इन द यूरिया साइकिल यूरिया साइकिल ऑकर्स ओनली इन द लीवर इन एडिशन टू दिस इंक्रीज अमोनिया लेवल विच इज सीवियर इन टाइप वन एंड टाइप टू इट इज एन इनिबिटरी न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर which is required which has control over the respiratory centers it is arginosuccinic acid increase in the blood and it is excreted in the urine hello students today's topic of discussion is important clinical case which is from the protein metabolism we are in the early clinical exposure in the discussion of important clinical case from the topic urea cycle disorder this may be an important laq in the university examination in a case based question or clinical case case based question this can be a clinical case or this can be a saq urea cycle disorder can be a saq this is very very important topic for first year because it is connected with the important topic that is urea cycle which is very very important in the protein metabolism so this is one of the frequently asked laq urea cycle and urea cycle disorders one of the frequently asked laq in the first professional examination and now in the cbme curriculum you can get case based question or essay type question on this urea cycle disorders so let's discuss clinical case a 4 month old infant infant means below 1 year age a product of consanguineous marriage develop poor feeding develop poor feeding hepatosplenomegaly means enlargement of liver and spleen convulsion tachypnea and coma tachypnea means increased rate of respiration blood investigation revealed an increase in levels of nh3 and glutamine this is a hint here there is increase in the ammonia levels urine was positive for orotate crystals urine was positive for the orotate crystals blood ph was 7.6 partial pressure of carbon dioxide 28 mmhg and bicarbonate level 24 millimole per liter so this is normal the normal range is 22 to 28 millimole per liter the pco2 normal range is 35 to 45 so there is decrease in the pco2 so that indicates alkalosis and that is respiratory component pco2 is the respiratory component so 7.6 ph means ph increase it in, it indicates it indicates the alkalosis so this is respiratory alkalosis so it is already given here it is a respiratory alkalosis now what are the sub questions here what is your probable diagnosis why ammonia is toxic to the brain second important question what is the reason behind respiratory alkalosis in this patient and why orotic aciduria in this patient so we'll discuss the urea cycle important disorders related with the urea cycle and we'll discuss these important questions so there is hint here there is increased level of ammonia there is increased level of glutamine there is tachypnea there is cns manifestations cns symptoms are there and urine was positive for orotate crystal so respiratory alkalosis is given orotate crystal excretion in the urine is given ammonia level raised glutamine level raised cns manifestations are there and age of the child is 4 month 4 month so this case may be related with the urea cycle disorder because as per first mbbs syllabus is concerned whenever there is increase in the ammonia level That indicates the urea cycle disease. Okay, अभी ये कौन से टाइप का है दैट वी हैव टू डिसाइड टाइप वन है टाइप टू है या सिट्रोलिनेमिया है या आर्जिनोसक्सनिक एसिड यूरिया है या हाइपर आर्जिनेमिया है ये हमको डिसाइड करना है बट इट इन दिस हिस्ट्री इंडिकेट्स दैट इट इज ए यूरिया साइकिल डिसऑर्डर वेन एवर देर इज यूरिया साइकिल डिसऑर्डर देर इज इंक्रीज अमोनिया लेवल दैट कॉज इज मैनिफेस्टेशन सी एन एस मैनिफेस्टेशन एंड अदर सिम्टम्स ऑल्सो so we'll discuss one by one now see this is important cycle given by the sir hans krebs and kurt henslet it occurs in the liver first two steps these two steps occurs in the mitochondria and the next three steps third fourth and fifth these steps occurs in the cytosol so these two steps that is cps1 and ornithine transcarbamylase step 
occurs in the mitochondria the next three steps third fourth and fifth it occurs in the cytosol okay now there are five enzymes which are important in the urea cycle urea cycle occurs only in the liver because this arginase this enzyme which is only present in the liver that's why urea cycle occurs in the liver now see there is condensation of co2 and ammonium ion to form carbamyl phosphate which combines with the ornithin to form citrulline this is condensation reaction in presence of ornithine transcarbamylase the citrulline condenses with aspartate to form arginosuccinate in presence of enzyme arginosuccinate synthetase arginosuccinate it is cleaved by the lyase enzyme that is arginosuccinate lyase into fumarate and arginine and arginine in presence of arginase gives urea so one nitrogen of the urea it is from the ammonia and one nitrogen is from the aspartate this is urea cycle the green color indicates enzymes while red color indicates the disorders so five important disorders they are connected with the five important enzymes of urea cycle and the sixth disorder is triple h syndrome h h h syndrome okay so these are the six important disorders related with urea cycle now see first two disorders the first is due to cps1 deficiency carbamyl phosphate synthetase deficiency and in first two disorders there is severe severe increased in the ammonia level because this is early block which directly elevates the ammonia level okay urea cycle prime function is to detoxify ammonia into urea to detoxify the ammonia into its excretable form that is urea so whenever there is blocked in the first or second reaction there is severe hyperammonemia okay so hyperammonemia type 1 in the hyperammonemia type 1 there is increase nh3 level and in the hyperammonemia type 2 which is due to ornithine transcarbamylase defect there is increase ammonia level there is increase glutamine level glutamine level also there is excretion of orotic acid in urine that occurs in hyperammonemia type 2 why why there is increase orotic acid in the urine in this disorder because because of defect in this ornithine transcarbamylase it diverts this carbamyl phosphate for the purine for the pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis it diverts this for the pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis and in the pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis orotic acid is the intermediate that's why there is increase in the orotic acid level in the type 2 hyperammonemia so type 2 urea cycle disorder that is type 2 hyperammonemia there is increase nh3 there is increase glutamine there is increase orotic acid in the hyperammonemia type 2 then in the citrullinemia there is defect in arginosuccinate synthetase there is increase ammonia level there is increase citrullin there is increase citrullin level then fourth one is the arginosuccinic acid urea here arginosuccinic acid excreted in the urine arginosuccinic acid excreted in the urine and one typical feature is there that is trichorhexis nodosa there is friable tufted hair in this arginosuccinic acid urea and hyper arginemia there is increase in the arginine level so all disorder in these all five disorders there is increase nh3 increase ammonia level in addition to this increase ammonia level which is severe in type 1 and type 2 there is increase glutamine and increase orotic acid excretion in the hyperammonemia type 2 there is increase citrulline level in the citrullinemia there is increase arginosuccinic acid level and their excretion in the urine in the arginosuccinic acid urea and there is increase arginine level in the hyper arginemia apart from increase in the ammonia level one more defect is there that is h h h syndrome triple h syndrome that is hyper ammonemia means increase nh3 hyper ornithinemia means increase ornithine level and homocitrulline urea triple h syndrome this is due to triple h syndrome this is due to defect in the transport of ornithine now this is mitochondria this is cytosol 
ornithine which is generated in the cytosol there is need to be transport this ornithine from cytosol into mitochondria so one transporter is there that is known as ornithine transporter 1 so ornt1 mutation causes triple h syndrome so so ornithine accumulates that causes hyper ornithinemia there is hyper ammonemia and homocitrulline urea so these are the disorders related with the urea cycle now see why NH3 is toxic here? Why ammonia is toxic, which is typically or severe in the type 1 and type 2? So, because it combines with alpha ketoglutarate, this NH4 ions, they combines with the alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate by the glutamate dehydrogenase reaction. And glutamate again combines with NH4 ion to form the glutamine and increase glutamine level causes cerebral edema and person can land up into the coma okay we increase glutamine level so depletion of this alpha ketoglutarate level hampers the tca cycle because t alpha ketoglutarate is is an intermediate of tca cycle when there is decrease in the alpha ketoglutarate level it hampers the tca cycle and there is decrease in the atp production that causes cns manifestations that causes CNS manifestations in the form of seizures, convulsion, intermittent ataxia. So, these are the symptoms due to decreased ATP production due to ammonia level, increased ammonia, ammonia level that diverts the alpha ketoglutarate of TCA cycle that hampers the cellular respiration in the brain and that causes the CNS manifestations in the form of seizures, convulsion. In, in adult, it causes the blurring of vision slurring of speech uh, slurring of speech tremors like symptom cns uh, manifestations so this is mainly because of depletion of atp level because depletion of alpha ketoglutarate which is an imp important intermedi intermediate of tca cycle patient can land up into a coma because of cerebral edema because of increased glutamine level because of increased glutamine level so this glutamate is diverted for the glutamine synthesis in presence of ammonium ions so this glutamate which is very very important for synthesis of GABA GABA is the gamma amino butyric acid it is an inhibitory neurotransmitters it is an inhibitory neurotransmitter which is required which has control over the respiratory centers and if the this GABA level decreases so inhibition or control over the respiratory centers it it is lost so that's why there is tachypnea so that's why there, there is tachypnea and this causes washing of co2 so hyperventilation is there tachypnea is there hyperventilation blow outs the co2 so co2 wash out co2 level decreases and that causes respiratory alkalosis so this is reason why there is respiratory alkalosis this is reason why there is cns manifestations this is why ammonia is toxic because it depletes the uh, atp atp levels and why there is orotic aciduria because this accumulated compound carbamoyl phosphate it is diverted for the pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis and in pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis there is formation of orotic acid which is excreted in the urine this typically this is typically occurs these symptoms now see the symptoms again four month old infant product of consanguineous marriage develop poor feeding hepatosplenomegaly convulsion tachypnea tachypnea is there so hyperventilation is there it is because of loss of inhibition over the respiratory centers because of decrease GABA inhibitory neurotransmitter blood investigation revealed an increased NH3 level which is toxic which decreases the cellular respiration in the brain which depletes the alpha ketoglutarate level and decrease the ATP synthesis there is also the increase in the glutamine level in the cerebrospinal fluid in the blood increase in the glutamine level there is excretion of orotid crystals this is because of diversion of carbamyl phosphate towards the pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis and orotic acid is the intermediate of pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis that's why there is orotic acid urea there is respiratory alkalosis because of hyperventilation because of tachypnea because of loss of inhibitory control over the respiratory centers 
so that causes the respiratory alkalosis because of hyperventilation co2 washed out co2 level partial pressure of co2 decreases that causes respiratory alkalosis so these are the five important disorders of urea cycle that is hyperammonemia type 1 hyperammonemia type 2 citrullinemia arginosuccinic aciduria hyperarginemia and the sixth one is the triple h syndrome hyperammonemia hyperornithinemia and homocitrullin urea see this see this so this is type 1 this is type 2 see the product accumulated here you can see the product accumulated here so there is increase in the ammonia in the type 1 in the type 2 there is increase in the ammonia there is increase in the glutamine and there is orotate excretion in the urine in the type 2 hyperammonemia in the triple h syndrome there is hyperornithinemia hyperammonemia and homocitrullin urea in the triple h syndrome this is because of mutation in ORNTN1 gene means ornithine transporter is defective there is defect in the transport of ornithine from cytosol to the mitochondria citrullinemia it is due to arginosuccinate synthesis defect and there is increased citrulline level apart from the ammonia there is increase in the citrulline level in arginosuccinic aciduria the lies defect and it is arginosuccinic acid increase in the blood and it is excreted in the urine so there is trichorexis nodosa one characteristic feature there is friable tufted hair in arginosuccinic aciduria and hyperarginemia there is increased arginine level apart from increase in the ammonia levels so this is all about the urea cycle disorder an important clinical case which is related with the urea cycle disorder that is hyperammonemia type 2 hyperammonemia type 2 there is respiratory alkalosis the toxic manifestation cns manifestations because of raised nh3 level raised glutamine level uh, there is orotic acid excretion in the urine because of deficiency of ornithine transcarbomylase it is diverted for the pyrimidine nucleotide intermediate that is orotic acid so this is all for the discussion of urea cycle disorders thank you